Here's the story of a lovely lady. Moving sucks. <laughs> According to Psychology Today, moving is one of the most stressful events in our lives, preceded only by divorce and a death in the family. Now, take all that stress and add on to it Brady Bunching. What is Brady Bunching? Well, hopefully you remember this show. That's the way we all became the Brady Bunch. The Brady Bunch. The Brady in the Brady Bunch, Two families come together under a single roof to create a bunch. Now, because this is a channel about cats, we're gonna talk about integrating two groups of cats. Because if you think that you're stressed out by moving, you haven't met a cat yet. Humans are routine based. We have sets of things that we do that make us feel okay throughout the day. When you're moving and all that stuff is in boxes and put away and, and you get up in the morning and go, okay, first I brush my teeth, where's the toothbrush? Okay, it's over here, not here. Where's the toothpaste? It's as simple as that. An almost unconscious act that, that served as the anchor of your day got chaotic and now the rest of your day unravels. Routine is also super important to cats, but on top of that, so is the concept of ownership of territory, which they define first and foremost through scent. So when they're in an unfamiliar territory with other cats, it's like you looking for that toothbrush blindfolded and surrounded by hostile strangers. So like I said, moving sucks. Brady bunching is really hard but there is a process around it that'll help you navigate it. And the first thing that you wanna do is identify what type of bunch you are. So if you're in the classic Brady situation, then you and your cats are moving into someone else's home. But in the double Brady, you and another person are moving into a brand new space together. Oh, and by the way, everybody's cats are moving as well. I'm giving you this overall view of how we're gonna get from here to here. In terms of the finer points, the techniques, the step-by-step, -step, I've got a playlist attached to the description, book chapters that delve into this whole thing. I will take you step-by-step. -step. Don't worry, I got you. Just watch this first, and then you can go back and get into it. So is there some straightforward, surefire way to make everybody love everybody else? No, because in any bunch, we're dealing with a bunch of individuals. We're dealing with preferences and triggers and idiosyncrasies. That's living with others. And so yes, there are curveballs, but there's also a process. And if you apply any of the concepts of this process, you are getting off on the right foot. We just wanna break the experience down into bite-sized pieces. So we have this timeline here. We have before you move, settling in, the first little moment. Then we have bunching, where we actively are getting everyone together. And then, of course, the Emerald City, a family. Like I said before, scent is the key to ownership for cats. So that's where we're gonna start, scent. And then we'll work our way up from there. So let's go. And the best place to start is before you start. So before you move, you want to get your two sets of cats on the same routine, and much of that revolves around food. So stop free feeding. If you put food out all the time, just stop that right now and go to meals. If you give your cats treats all the time, stop that. It only happens at designated times. Any presentation of food has to be regimented. I know, this sounds like tough love, but believe me, food is the ultimate motivator and it gets both sets of cats synced to the same rhythm before they ever meet. Now, as you start to pack up your things, resist that really strong urge you have to throw away any of your cat's belongings. Remember how important scent identification is to cats, so it's going to help this transition immensely if they are surrounded by items that already have familiar smells to them. And where are we going to put those items? In base camp. Base camp is a designated safe space that helps cats feel secure as they adjust to a new home. Now they're gonna stay exclusively in their base camp for about the first couple of days or so, but as they go through their lives, well after base camp isn't necessary anymore, it's still necessary because they can retreat back to it in times of overwhelm or panic. So now you remember what kind of Brady you are? 
Good, because now it becomes important. Because in the classic Brady, you only have to have one base camp because you really don't want the resident cats to think, well, just because these newcomers came, I lost something. I mean, it's the resident cat's home. What are you gonna do? You put them into a base camp and they are just going to say, those guys came and I lost territory. That is not getting off on the right foot. The house belongs to the residents. Now, alternately, in the double Brady, we're going to have two distinct base camps. Why? Because nobody owns the house yet. So everyone's gonna own it exactly at the same time. So where does base camp go? Well, part of it depends on your home itself and your Brady scenario. But what I will say is this, if you're going to be sharing a bedroom with the other human, avoid using that bedroom as base camp because that space is loaded with your scent. It makes it the most important spot in the house for your cats. And we don't want one group to feel more of a sense of ownership over that than the other. Remember I was telling you about the importance of those routines before you move? Once you get them into base camp, and I mean as soon as you get them into base camp, get back into the, those routines, playing and meals, the whole thing, because giving them something familiar to focus on prevents them from going into total overwhelm. And in these routines, it's never too early to start involving the new human, because in the cat's eyes, being presented with toys and treats and meals by this new person, they say, these are my favorite things. I see you presenting them. You can't be a bad thing. If you're wondering when your cat is ready to move on to the next step, your cat's body language will tell you when it's time to move on. So if your cat is still hiding or freezing when you walk into the room, not exploring their space, and if they do, it's with tail tucked and an army crawl. If they're not eating predictably, using the litter box predictably, don't do anything. Just keep repeating your routines and they'll get there. When they are ready, your cat will be more the cat you know. Curiosity equals confidence. Exploring the space, getting up on things, exploring that door. What's on the side of that door? They come up to you and interact with you. They eat, they drink predictably. Tail held high, walking up to you. They are ready for the next challenge. You are ready to move on. You know, while you're in the middle of all of this stressful moving thing, you know, just take a breath. And in that breath say, I really should subscribe to this channel because this is a really good channel. And maybe I'll give a thumbs up while I'm at it. Put a comment in, be a part of this whole community. I think it's a great use of your time. An even better use is if you see that button next to subscribe that says join, that's you becoming a mojo knot, which means that you get extra content nobody else sees, lots of little perks and goodies. Just check that out, become a mojo knot. Either way, thank you for being a part of this community. We've crossed our first hurdle. Congratulations. We are now officially bunching. Now remember I told you how important scent is, scent identification for cats. Well, that's exclusively what we're gonna use here. It's much more important for your cats anyway, but it's also less stressful. And basically all we're gonna be doing is replacing suspicion and fear with positive associations. We wanna work on feeding both sets of cats on opposite sides of a closed door. Where is that door? Well, in the classic Brady, it's the base camp door. In the double Brady, their base camps are separate. So who gets to come out to the door to eat? Well, that's whoever is the more confident and curious of the two sets. They come out and eat at the other base camp door. So we start at a distance on either side of the door, which is comfortable meaning they walk up, they eat, they walk away. That could be eight feet total, five feet on either side of the door. It could be anything as long as they cross that first thing. I don't rush up to the door. I don't pick a fight. I eat and I walk away. And then over time, we're going to get those distances closer and closer until it's just a few feet total. Every step along the way, we're replacing suspicion and fear with positive association. It's as if your cats are saying, I eat, I smell you. The only time I eat, I smell you. So you can't really be a bad thing. And now's that time where you resist the temptation to just give out treats because you feel sorry for everybody. Treats count as well. Anytime there's food, it's at the door. This is also a great moment for you and the other human in the house to start breaking down those walls between my cats and your cats by taking turns which human feeds which sets of cats, you're officially co-parenting. 
So I'm going to take this moment to remind you about your cat's body language checklist that you have because we want to get these guys comfortably eating on either side of that door and still exhibiting confidence and curiosity. That lets you know you're ready for the next step, the next level of introducing by scent alone. And then the next step is called sight swapping. And sight swapping is that way of cats getting to explore one another's base camps without ever having to lay eyes on each other. And remember, in the classic Brady scenario, the resident cat's de facto base camp is the master bedroom. So that's what we're swapping. So the way your cats see it, I smell you, I know you own a part of this house, but I own a part of this house too. So I'm not threatened, I can't see you, you must not be a bad thing. Let's go back to our body language checklist because I always want you to end these swapping experiences on a high note. As soon as you see any sign of overwhelm or shutdown, it's time to call it a day, let's go back into base camp, get our treats, it can't be such a bad thing. You know, through really potentially traumatic processes like moving, we can use all the help we can get. That's why I make a line of flower essence remedies for cats. This one right off the bat, you should have for everybody. This is called Stress Stopper. During that move, during the overwhelm and shock, having this on board in a pretty consistent way just helps bring the temperature down, which believe me, everyone's gonna need. Once you start getting into the bunching of things, then move on to the ultimate peacemaker set because whether you are a bully, whether you're getting picked on, or whether you just wanna go for the, let's just all get along, three formulas in here will address it all individually and as a group, help us build community with these guys. Ooh, we are now at the gates of the Emerald City. So close, we can taste the Emerald City. Now that your cats are, are demonstrating confidence around each other's scents, we can start expanding out base camp and letting them explore the space again without ever having to lay eyes on the other cats. Remember, all of the objects in base camp signify ownership. So we're basically turning the whole house into a base camp. And we're gonna start migrating those into a common room so that your cats can walk around, smell themselves on something new, smell the other cats on something new, and start to form community by scent alone. In essence, we are creating one big base camp for everybody. Scents are mingled, but the cats can do it with the benefit of not having to introduce visual access. And to your cats, I own it, I share it, but I'm not threatened, so you can't be a bad thing. We are now ready to graduate from scent only to sight. We're gonna replace that closed door that we're feeding at with a pet gate. And this way, when we're having the meals, the gate opens, I can see you, I can smell you, but I'm still getting my food and you're still not a bad thing. I'll take this moment to remind you again, I'm giving you the big process. That's why you have a playlist in the description with every moment of this video broken down into steps. All you have to know now is again, pay attention to your cat's body language. When they're ready, they'll tell you and we can move towards removing that gate altogether. Well, 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 the gates to the Emerald City are officially open. Folks, come on in, welcome to the Emerald City. Just remember something, the Emerald City like I said before, it's not about cuddling and grooming each other and oh, you're my bestie. It's about tolerating one another. That's where we wanna start. And there's no better place to start than mealtime because nothing signifies ownership of territory more than where we eat. If we can pull up a chair and sit at the same table together, then we are on our way. So that's where I wanna start, eating in a common area, but just remember, the second things start feeling edgy or a little weird to you, call that a high note. And then everybody gets to go back into base camp and we call it a day. And as you move forward from here, the, just the goal is more and more time together around those meals, just spread out the time. Keeping in mind body language and keeping in mind ending on a high note. Because really as we get there, the more and more time everyone spends in a common space, it becomes everybody's space. And you know what that means? You're officially a bunch. Now I do wanna make sure I take a moment to say that your job in this whole thing is not just you know, being the butler and the monitor of body language and the, the data keeper. This is not just about a bunch of stuff 
and ownership. It's also about relationships. So don't miss any opportunity to co-parent, to start breaking down those walls of my cat versus your cat, because that really signifies a bunch. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Hey, you guys. Welcome to the world of Brady. Now that you've watched this video, what's next? Well, watch one of these. Meow. First of all, Greg is going through puberty. You don't want him anywhere near the girls. <laughs> Far out. Greg's like, okay, they're your sisters now. Okay. Um, I got some new pajamas I could wear. 